Today, we're talking about why the next big AI platform war is not about a model. It is about your context, specifically where it lives and who and what tools have access to it. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. I am very publicly on record at this point of saying that I think the two big themes for enterprise AI in 2026 are context and ROI. And this idea of context engineering is both a term and a framing and a discipline that have been on the rise throughout this year. Back in June, for those of you who want a primer, we did an episode called Context Engineering, what it is and why it matters. That was June 25th, or you can just search for it on Google. You will definitely find it. And today what we're talking about is a news announcement that seems pretty simple at first, but I think is revealing of a broader context war that's going to be a key feature of product developments over the year to come. So first, let's do a little tiny bit of background on what this idea is. Around the middle of the year, you started to see tweets like this one from Toby Lutke from Shopify who wrote, I really like the term context engineering over prompt engineering. It describes the core skill better. The art of providing all the context for the task to be plausibly solvable by the LLM. So you're getting a couple things from this. First of all, what context engineering is, is about organizing and orchestrating all of the data and information that an AI or an agent would need to successfully complete whatever task it's assigned. The connection to prompt engineering is the idea that while prompt engineering was about how to specify and name your task in ways that the AI could best understand and give you the type of response you wanted, context engineering refers to giving it access to everything it needs to not only do that better, but to take on bigger and bigger tasks. Anthropic, in a recently published guide called Effective Context Engineering for AI Agents, which we're going to talk about a little bit later in the show, describes the difference this way. They said, building with language models is becoming less about finding the right words and phrases for your prompts, and more about answering the broader question of what configuration of context is most likely to generate our model's desired behavior. Back around that same time, OpenAI co-founder Andre Karpathy weighed in, saying, plus one for context engineering over prompt engineering. People associate prompts with short task descriptions you'd give an LLM in your day-to-day -day use, when in every industrial strength LLM app, context engineering is the delicate art and science of filling the context window with just the right information for the next step. Science because doing this right involves task descriptions and explanations, few shot examples, RAG, related possibly multimodal data, tools, state, and history. Too little or of the wrong form, and the LLM doesn't have the right context for optimal performance. Too much or too irrelevant, and the LLM costs might go up and performance might come down. Doing this well is highly non-trivial. And art because of the guiding intuition around LLM psychology of people's spirits. Now, I actually think that in some ways, when we use the term context engineering right now, we're referring to two entirely different things. There is, on the one hand, this highly technical process for how we're designing AI and agentic systems to be able to access and capture the right context at the right time. This is the sort of entrepreneurial or technical side of context engineering, and where a lot of the focus in the discussion is because people are still figuring out the best ways to give AI and agents the right context. There is another side, though, which is the one that's going to be a little bit more relevant for enterprises, and where I'm taking the concept and dragging it a little bit to the left, which is context engineering and context orchestration as the art of putting together in accessible ways all of the data and information people within your business context need to get the most out of the LLMs and agents that they're using. Basically, for enterprises, context engineering is closely related to the sort of data readiness, data accessibility, and data fragmentation issues that we've been talking about recently particularly in that episode I did about the lessons that we've learned from superintelligence thousands of interviews. And this is, of course, what I mean when I say that 2026 is all about context engineering. What I mean is that I think it's going to be about how enterprises organize and connect their data in ways that make it accessible to the AI systems that their people are using and that they are deploying to get ever increasingly complex sets of tasks done. So that is the background context through which I want to recontextualize. And man, we really need a word other than context here this announcement from yesterday that ChatGPT is now in Slack. Slack posted, Big news, the ChatGPT app for Slack is here. With Slack's new real-time search API, the ChatGPT app for Slack brings the power of ChatGPT into a dedicated Slack sidebar, a space for you to ask questions, brainstorm ideas, draft content, and solve problems. This is just the beginning of a smarter way to work together. Basically, the new app allows users to use ChatGPT from right within the app. Whatever the types of things that you would do for work tasks that you would do on the native ChatGPT app, you can now do directly from within Slack. This follows, by the way, a similar announcement from Claude and Slack from just last month. Now, part of the value here is just not having to switch between different applications. 
there is an inherent lag and a time drain when you have to move around between different environments. And so one part of it is just bringing that convenience and keeping people in Slack more where they're already doing that work. Importantly, though, for both integrations, they're connected to Slack's new real-time search API. What this means is that the models, whether it's Claude or ChatGPT, are able to search through your Slack instance to access the full context of your work chats. In other words, instead of having to explain and give a bunch of preamble around the context for a particular request, by having this embedded in Slack and connected to the real-time search API, if that context exists in your Slack conversations, the idea is that these LLMs can just draw upon that without you having to go explain it. One of the things we've been talking about a lot recently is how powerful memory is as a moat when it comes to LLM usage. At this point, I am very regularly using ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, and Grok. For me right now, there is no one model to win them all. In fact, in a tweet this week, I compared them to a team of different interns, all with different personalities. And yet, despite knowing what I like for different use cases, my default has been and will continue to be, at least for now, GPT-5 because of how much context ChatGPT has about me just through the basic memory that it has. I don't have to re-explain everything about the AI Daily Brief or Super Intelligent every time I ask it to engage with a strategic question. And that's an example of where its own memory is the context. Now, bringing it back to Slack, this is actually part of a broader announcement. Alongside ChatGPT, the company reframed this as the next evolution of the Slack platform. And basically what they're trying to do is be the foundational infrastructure for agentic work. They write, now you can build and use powerful, context-aware AI apps and agents that securely connect to your conversational data right in your flow of work. And they point to applications from OpenAI, Anthropic, Google, Perplexity, Writer, Dropbox, and Notion as all taking advantage of that context. Now, Slack and its parent company, Salesforce, know exactly how valuable this context data is. We know this because back in June, right around the time, by the way, that we were first having these context engineering conversations, Salesforce started blocking companies like Glean from accessing Slack data. Now, this was a big hit on Glean, which has started to carve some of its own moat as an enterprise search tool. Glean tried to turn their customers against Salesforce, basically making the argument that the data doesn't belong to Slack and Salesforce, even though it happened in Slack, that it belongs to the customers and that they should be able to bring it wherever they want into Glean, despite Glean being a competitor to certain types of AI features that Salesforce and Slack wanted to build. According to an internal email that was intended for Glean customers, they claimed that Salesforce and Slack were, quote, hampering your ability to use your data with your chosen enterprise AI platform. Then a couple of weeks ago, however, Salesforce reversed positions and opened Slack backup for external AI. And now alongside Dreamforce, which is going on in San Francisco right now, we can see how their approach has changed. Instead of them trying to just keep everything in their own AI ecosystem, it seems like they are now instead making a bet that the incredible context represented by Slack make it the perfect place to be a context platform for all other AI apps. Indeed, the company is now positioning Slack as your agentic OS. As part of that, they're launching a new personal AI companion called Slackbot, as well as their own version of Enterprise Search, but they're also making this a platform play, quote, powering an open ecosystem of agents that connect to your entire enterprise. And this is why the title of this show is about why the next platform war is in a model, but all about your context. Dong Ming writes, Slack seems like an obvious place for people and AI agents to interact. As AI agents become more common in the future, I guess that's where they will hang out to gain more context and do better work. MJ Kang writes, Post MCP, everyone's scrambling to become everyone else's aggregator. The winner will be the product with the richest personalized context. And to do that, the company should, one, have the longest session time and strongest engagement, and two, collect as much information as possible. And indeed, if those two things are the big criteria, you can see why a work communication app like Slack might be such a contender. However, it is not the only contender. There have been a set of announcements over the past couple of months that all suggest how this context platform war is going to be fought. Back in June, Grammarly announced that it was acquiring Superhuman. Now, when it was announced, Grammarly said that the acquisition was about accelerating its evolution into a, quote, AI productivity platform for apps and agents, and that this acquisition, quote, positioned email as a critical communication service in the company's vision of an agentic future. A lot of that announcement was about email as a workspace into which you could embed agentic and AI tools 
and certainly given the amount of time we all spend on email, that made sense. However, Perplexity's launch of a personal email assistant kind of puts that acquisition into a different light. In that announcement, Perplexity gets more directly at just how much context about you email has. They write, email is more than a message center. Your inbox contains your professional memory, your relationships, calendaring, and coordination. And in Perplexity's case, while the goal is a personal assistant that takes advantage of that context, it's clear that what they are trying to access uniquely is the context that email provides. Context is also one of the big reasons that many people think Google has such an advantage when it comes to the long term, particularly for enterprise AI. A huge amount of work already happens in the Google workspace. Think about your Gmail, your Google Drive, your calendar, slides, forms, you name it. That entire suite is just buckets and buckets of work context specific to you. Now let's reframe last week's announcement of Gemini Enterprise in light of this broader platform war for context. Gemini Enterprise effectively pulls together context from Google Drive, Gmail, and Google Calendar and layers a powerful agentic interface on top of it. Now, there is, of course, one other company that has a ton of work context that isn't currently in this conversation, but which lurks just around the edges, and that is Microsoft. Microsoft has even more enterprise data than Google, with even more lock in around Teams, around Outlook, and the full suite of Microsoft work apps. And that creates an opportunity for them, even if they are rather late to the party, to be a major contender for enterprise AI simply because of the context they have. At this point, it is still very early in the applied corpus of our understanding around context engineering. But if you are in an enterprise and you're starting to think about your strategy for next year, I would highly encourage you to think about this as part and parcel of the broader conversation around data and data readiness. Because what we are seeing over and over again is that to really get the most out of AI and agents, context is king. And that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.